Hello everyone, and thank you for joining today's Code Along. My name is Reese, and I'll be your moderator today. We're going to kick off the session in a couple of minutes. We're just waiting so everyone has a chance to join. In the meanwhile, though, we'd love to hear from you. So let us know where you're joining from using the chat or the comments, depending on what platform you're watching on. And yeah, tell us something that you'd like to get out of the session today. We are going to be using DataCamp Workspace today. So if you don't have an account already, then please uh, yeah, sign up for one. You will be able to do this Code Along for free, so don't worry about having the Need, needing to pay for anything or anything like that. Uh, if you haven't registered already, then please do that. I'll be sending a link to do so in the chat very shortly. You can scan the QR code on screen uh, or you can head over to datacamp.com forward slash webinars and you can also have a look at everything else that we've got uh, coming up in 2024 as well. Brilliant. I'll be back to repeat these messages for uh, any new joiners shortly, but until then, enjoy the background music. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining today's Code Along. My name is Reese, and I'll be your moderator today. We're gonna to kick off today's session in a couple of minutes. We're just waiting so everyone has a chance to join. Uh, it's great to see so many people active in the chat. Let us know where you're joining from so that we can get an idea of where everyone is. Yeah, always good to see the uh, the breadth of uh, locations that we've got everyone tuning in from. Uh, we are gonna be using DataCamp Workspace in the session today. So if you don't have a DataCamp account already, then please set one up. Uh, you will be able to code along for free once we share the code along link. So yeah, make sure you get that set up so you can code along live with us. Uh, if you do miss any part of the session though, if you register, we will send you everything that you need to complete this code along async. So yeah, make sure you get registered uh, for that. You can register using the QR code on screen. You can head to the link that I've put in the chat or you can head over to datacamp.com forward slash webinars as well. Uh, also today, keep an eye in the chat. I'm gonna be sharing a few resources that will be relevant for what we're gonna go through today, uh, as well as a few other bits as well. Brilliant, I'll be back to repeat these messages uh, one last time for any new joiners shortly, but uh, yeah, until then, enjoy the background music. Hello everyone, and thank you for joining today's Code Long. My name is Reese, and I'll be your moderator today. We're gonna to kick off this session in about 20 seconds or so. We've just been waiting, so everyone has had a chance to join. Uh, let us know where you're joining from. Always good to see the variety of locations that we've got people uh, watching in from. And yeah, uh, if you haven't already, make sure you register for the event today. Uh, if you register, we will send you the recording as well as all the resources that you need to complete this code along async. Uh, you can register by scanning the QR code on screen. Uh, you can head over to datacamp.com forward slash webinars, and you can also find the link that we've posted in the chat as well. Uh, aside from that, make sure you've got a Datacamp workspace uh, a able, enabled account. Uh, you just need to go sign up on Datacamp. You won't need to pay or anything else like that. It's all free uh, today. Brilliant. I think that's everything from me. So now I'll hand you over to your host for today's session, Richie. Richie, please take it away. Hi there, data scamps and data champs. This is Richie. Now, exploratory data analysis is the single most widely used skill by data analysts and data scientists. And the reason for this is that every time you get a new data set, this is the first thing you have to do. So you crunch some numbers, you draw some plots, and just try and understand what the data set contains and what sort of questions can be answered with it. 
Now, the focus is usually on speed rather than perfection. So you want to be able to ask and answer as many questions as you can about the data set as quickly as possible rather than polishing everything because that can come later in your project. And today we're exploring a fun data set on English Premier League soccer. If you have a favorite team, please do let us know in the chat. Um, there are no wrong answers here. Now, our guest is George Cunningham. He's a business development representative here at DataCamp. Now, I have to say, um, at DataCamp, we, we talk a lot about data science. It's for everyone. One of the groups that I get the most pushback on this from is often salespeople. So sometimes they're a bit resistant to the idea that they need some data skills. And so I'm very pleased to be able to show off George as an exception. Uh, he has uh, uh, a bit of an advantage here in that he was uh, a web developer before he moved into sales. And I have to say, a bit of Python really is useful for everyone. And George, in fact, learned Python on DataCamp back in 2016. So with that, over to you, George. Yeah, thanks for the introduction, as Richie mentioned. Uh... Currently in sales, but have done a, a little bit of coding in the past. So uh, hope you're kind with the questions. Obviously, uh, this is a beginner session, so so there shouldn't be anything too too advanced. Um, I guess I'll switch over to the slide now. So as Richie mentioned, this this data set is Premier League table statistics, and it goes from the 2000 2001 season until 2020 2021. Um, we're going to be using this data to just perform some basic data analysis, um, create a couple tables, and kind of look at that data, draw some conclusions, and, and then make a couple charts as well. Um, so hopefully give you a good taster for kind of how Python can be used some, you know, to perform some quick basic analysis uh, and kind of demonstrate the breadth uh, of that. Um, so without further ado, I'm going to switch across to the uh, workspace. Give everyone a couple of minutes to, to get in there if they need to. Um, OK, so in, just for initial setup, um, we're going to be importing pandas, Seaborn, um, I'll let you read that, um, and I will create that code block. Okay, I'm just going to, for the sake of speed, copy that in across um, here, and then we'll run this code block as needed. Okay, um, next up, we're going to actually import the data across. Um, I'll show everyone we have a CSV here, which just has all the raw data in it. So we're going to be importing that into the workspace. So down here. Right, so we're going to save that in as EPL. Uh, we're going to just do a pd.read CSV. And the name of that file is epl.csv. OK, and following that, we are just going to print um, the info of that so we can take a look uh, and then also print the head. Excuse me. Okay. So let's run that and just take a quick look then. So we can see we have uh, 11 different columns here, uh, various different statistics, um, and then the head of the data. We can kind of get a look for what the rows will look like. So we'll have a season position. Looks like it's sorted by kind of season and then position. Um, and then kind of we've got this long qualification or relegation column. Um, additionally, in this section, we're going to create a data frame. Um, and we're just going to select the relevant columns from this larger um, CSV. I'm going to copy and paste this across to save you watching me write out uh, you know, five different column names. But we're just selecting the season and then the teams where they finished with how many points, how many goals they scored, goal difference, and then that qualification or relegation column. Okay, so I will now run that. So for our next task, we're going to clean up this qualification or relegation column, because at the minute, it's quite wordy. Um, it's going to be difficult to kind of look at this table um, just in kind of when we're printing and, and just to write, you know, perform analysis on it. It just doesn't look great. Um, so first up, we're going to write a function um, that is going to, to go through this and just make that a little bit more readable. Um, we're going to call this function update result. Uh, so to start off with, we're just going to have an if statement. And we're going to say, if uh, Champions League is in the result column, we're going to set that result to just be Champions League. So you can see here, it's kind of got this 
almost in like sentence form qualification for the Champions League first group stage. So we don't need that much information about like how far they got on it. We just want to know for our sake, did they qualify for Champions League? Did they qualify for Europe in general? Um, and then we're going to run an else if we have Europa in there or UEFA. We're going to reassign it to be Europa. Again, there's a couple different um, Europa, UEFA League. Um, we're going to take it to be the same thing um, and just reassign that to Europa. So there'll be a distinction between Champions League, which is generally the top four teams uh, from a year, and Europa League, which has a few different ways to qualify, but we're generally going to down to about sixth, we're kind of between fourth and sixth. Um, but we'll see more about that when it gets further on in the data set. Um, we're gonna have another elif, and so if it contains relegation, we're just gonna reassign it to be relegated, and then kind of as a catch-all else, we're just gonna set the result to just be a dash. And then we're just gonna return the result, um, and hopefully, should have no issues there. Um, so now we're going to actually use this new function that we've written. Um, so in this code block here, we're going to update the column name for this qualification or relegation column to just be result. And we're going to apply this result function to the values within that. Um, OK, so we're going to do EPL condensed. And we're gonna, so we're gonna use the dot rename method here to rename this qualification or relegation to result as we just mentioned. So that's our first step, um, renaming a column. Then we're gonna apply that function um, to the values in that function in that column, sorry, the result column. So we're going to select the result column and we're going to use the dot apply method um, to apply update result, which we just writ wrote in the last section. Uh, and then let's print uh, that column um, just to make sure that everything looks how we expected and that we have no bugs. Yeah, before you run this, you've got a few typos in your function definition with Champions League and relegation. Oh, so, you need to fix so I do. Yeah, thank you for that one. Uh, in fact, just to make well. it easier, I am going to copy and paste some code I wrote earlier. Uh, and that should resolve any typos. OK. Um, OK, so I think we look good there. So we can see now um, we have 89 Champions League teams, 68 Europa League teams, and 63 relegated teams. So our function has worked. Um, it has updated those values. Um, and we can now move forward. So now we're going to actually kind of perform some analysis. Now we've cleaned up that data a little bit, made it a little bit easier to work with. We can begin to kind of draw some, look at some things and draw some conclusions. So the first thing we're going to do is just create a table of Champions League teams. And to do that, um, we're going to use that condensed table that we've made and group those by Champions League qualifiers. So first thing we're going to do is select the Champions League qualifiers from the table. I'm going to name those CL qual for Champions League qualifiers. Um, so the way we're going to do that is we're going to take our condensed data and then we're going to select where the condensed result column, so EPL condensed dot result, uh, is equal to Champions League. Now, we're going to use this CL qual um, to group teams, uh, to group by season, and then we're going to aggregate uh, the like the position 
Um, we're going to find the maximum position, which is going to be the lowest qualifying team. Um, we're going to find the minimum number of points that a team needed to qualify for the Champions League. And we're going to find the lowest goal difference. So to do that, we're going to create this new variable, CL qual stats. Um, and we're going to set that equal to CL qual. Just going to now on a new line, uh, do a dot group by. Uh, we're going to be grouping by season. And then we're going to aggregate based off position. And we want to return the max position. Ooh, typo there. Um, we're going to also aggregate points. And we want the minimum points because we want the lowest amount of points that someone could qualify with. And we're going to aggregate by goal difference. And again, we want the lowest goal difference. OK, so then after we've done this, let's print our new CL qual stats so we can take a look at some of this data. OK, so now we have it broken down season by season, uh, the lowest position team, the lowest points, and the lowest goal difference. Um, so some quick kind of, I don't know, you want to take kind of 10 seconds to just take a look at this and kind of come up with some thoughts about conclusions we can draw to this right off the bat we can see usually it takes about 65 to 70 points to qualify for the champions league and uh you know most of the time it's fourth place and, and there's we can see three clear outliers here where sixth place teams have qualified and a fifth place with a negative goal difference which is that's the only time that's ever happened um the next step we're going to do the same thing uh your turn we're going to do the same thing for europa league qualifiers um so once we've done this, we're going to compare the two tables and we'll take, you know, a quick five minute break or so, just not, not even five minute break. Just, just think about what it, you know, some conclusions that you could draw from, from comparing those two things. Okay. So we're just going to do exactly the same thing as before. Um, so instead of writing this all out again, we're going to do the same thing, but it's going to be EU qual, uh, and we're going to call this EU qual stats. So I'm just going to copy my code in from the results um, run this and we can take a look um, do you maybe want to take 20 seconds to look at this and think about how this looks different from the champions league table um, you know what you're noticing about this data versus the previous table um, and then we'll move on to the next section in 30 seconds let's say Okay, that was 30 seconds. Uh, just going to move on a little bit here. So some observations about this data. Um, most of the time, 70 points is going to qualify you for the Champions League. Um, you, we can see there's there aren't any times where, you know, 70 points has not qualified you for the Europa, and most of the time that's going to qualify you for the Champions League. You'd be pretty unlucky to score 70 points and not be in the Champions League. Usually it takes about 55 points to qualify for this Europa League. Um, sometimes teams have qualified with less. Sometimes with more, there's, there's kind of a higher variance in terms of points. Um, goal difference doesn't seem like it's a great predictor of which competition a team will qualify for because, the, again, there's such a wide range there. Obviously, the um, Europa League has skews slightly lower because it's lower position teams. But, you know, we have anywhere from negative 26 goal difference to like 18 down here. So, again, it, you, you couldn't only look at goal difference for a team and predict whether it was going to qualify for the Europa League or not. Um, again, talking about those outliers, there's three occasions a team has finished below fourth and still managed to qualify for the Champions League. Um, that's usually through winning it the previous year rather than your position in the table. And only one time has a team qualified for the Champions League with under 60 points. Um, and in that year, the team also qualified with a uh, negative goal difference. Um, three separate occasions a team's qualified from the Euro Europa League and been relegated the same year. So we can see here, 
Um, to be relegated, a team has to finish 18th, 19th, or 20th. So we have three separate occasions where a team has finished. The lowest finishing team qualifying for the Europa League has been in 18th. And so they've been relegated the, the next year, but also been playing in the Europa League, which is just kind of a, a fun fact. Um, okay, so let's move on to this next section here. We're going to do our first plot. Uh, we're going to plot a time series of EPL winners and relegated teams between 2000 and 2022. So to do so, um, sorry, just before that, talking about above, obviously we can draw some conclusions from these tab those tables, but it's kind of difficult to kind of spot trends and stuff like that because you're just kind of looking at, at numbers in a table. Um, that's where plots come in, a time series. It's often nice to see kind of uh, progression over time of things like points to qualify for the Champions League. You can see if it's trending upwards or downwards a little easier than in a table. Um, okay, so to do so, uh, we're going to first of all select winners from the EPL condensed um, table. I'm going to call that EPL winners. So we're going to use our EPL condensed and we're going to set it where the position column, um, position equals one. Simple enough. That's teams that are one, then their position is one. Um, and then just for future calculation we are also going to reset the index because that that will still be indexed based off the initial data frame um the condensed so that the index will kind of jump uh 20 places for each each winner so we're going to now reset the index um, of that using the dot reset index method we're going to drop the old column Ooh. Uh, next up, we're going to do the same thing. Um, we're going, but with relegated teams. Um, so to do this, because three teams are relegated and only one wins, it's a little bit different. Um, in that we're not picking the last team. We're actually going to pick the 18th team because that is the, the highest place relegated team, which means beneath, you know, anything beneath 18 will be relegated. So we're using that kind of as our floor. Um, we're going to do the same thing. It's like the EPL condensed where the position column is equal to 18. And then we are also going to reset the index of that using the same method as above. Um, now we're going to actually start making the plot. So we have our data there. We should have two um, series. You know, we have our EPL winners, which is just going to be a list of teams that won. Um, the Premier League. It's going to have all the same columns as our original data does, um, as our condensed data set does, sorry. Um, but again, it will only have those teams that won. And then the same thing for the relegated teams. So the first thing we're going to do with the figure um, is set the figure size. Um, fig size. This is just something I played around with before and found a good size for. Um, I'm not sure that there might be a better way to do it than, than when I do it, but I normally kind of eyeball it and set it to something that looks good. So we're going to use Seaborn here, which is something we imported earlier. We imported it as SNS. So we're going to use an SNS line plot. Um, we're going to set the X axis to be the season. Uh, and then we're going to set the Y axis to be the points scored that season. Um, the data we're going to use is obviously for the first line, we'll do EPL winners. Um, we're going to set that. So it has markers for each point, um, which we're going to set to be circles uh, and then we're going to set a color for the line uh, which i will copy across from here okay we also want to set a label on this because we're doing two lines on one plot so we want to be able to clearly distinguish which which line is for winners which is for losers it'll be obvious the ones with higher points the winners but just you know for best practice you generally want to label your series um, and then we do the same thing again uh, for relegated teams. Um, same exact thing. We're just swapping out data to be the relegation zone data. And the color is going to be different as well, just for readability. We are going to rotate the x-axis labels. As you'll see in a moment, um, if they weren't rotated vertically, you wouldn't be able to read them. Um, so here we use x-ticks to rotate them. And we want them to be rotated 90 degrees, so they're vertical. Again, just for readability, um, we're going to set the plot title. 
using plt.title. Um, we're going to name it points of EPL winners and relegated teams. Uh, we're going to label the axes now in plt.xlabel. So the x-axis, as we mentioned here, oh, no, sequels. Um, x-axis is going to be seasons. So we're going to just label that season. Oh, Y label, sorry. And then the Y label is going to be points scored. So we'll just do points. Um, second to last thing, we'll, we'll do this last thing for this section. We'll do plt.show, and that will actually display the plot. So now if I run this code, should get a nice plot here of, we have our winners season by season and our relegated teams season by season. So this is 18th place. So anything below this number of points would be relegated. Anything above it would be safe. Um, we can use a couple of quick, we can do a little bit of quick analysis off this. Since 2000, 2001, if you get 80 points in a season, you're going to win the league. No one's ever, well, in this data set, I think probably three times before this data, teams have actually won the league with about 78, 79 points. But generally, over the last 20 years, if you score 80 points, you're going to win. Likewise, you've got to get more than 30 points. If you get below 30 points, it, it most likely you, you will be getting relegated. So one additional thing um, we're going to do before we kind of break for 10 minutes, um, we're going to calculate the correlation between the points that a winner scored in a season and the points needed to not be relegated. So we're going to we're going to find the correlation season over season. So kind of the, well, we'll, we'll, we'll talk about it after we, we've calculated, we'll talk about what that means. Um, so we're going to print this value as well, so we can see it. We can do EPL winners and stick the points column. So we want to, oh, oh also we're going to find the difference. Sorry, I forgot to mention that. We're going to find the difference. So the points from top to relegation as well as a correlation. So this uh, first thing we're going to do is we're going to find the difference top to bottom. So to do so, we're going to take the winner's points uh, and we're going to just subtract the relegator's points. Um, and then we're just going to average that for this time period. So we take the mean. And then the second thing we're going to print, as I mentioned, is just going to be the correlation between the winners. So winner's points, use the dot correlation method here. Um, and then the relegated people's points. Okay, so if I run this again now, we'll get two values here. Oh, um, that's just a spelling error. Okay, so we have these two values here. We're going to take a short break now. We'll do five minutes. Um, we think about, obviously this is the, the average points gap, but let's think about this, this number, the correlation negative 0 0.31 and think about what that means. Um, and also we can think about if you want to go back up in your workspace to the two tables we created earlier, we can think about some, maybe some more conclusions we can draw um, between those. But let's think about kind of, like I mentioned, what this correlation might mean and take five minutes now. All right. While we're doing break, we do have um, some questions from the audience. So let's go through those now. So a <laughs> bit of a fun one, this, uh, from an anonymous LinkedIn user. But is it true you scored a bicycle kick this past Sunday uh, for your Sunday league team? Could not possibly be true. <laughs> <laughs> uh, that sounds uh, like uh, a bit of a challenge, but uh, it'd be great yeah. if it was true. Um, all right. Uh, this uh, next question comes from what Rawad saying, uh, can we use the describe method of a data frame to get the values we're looking for on average? Just want to explain what describe does. Yeah, we can, in fact, we can call it, uh, if we scroll up a little bit um, up to our one of these tables that we have. So if we, instead of just printing the full table, let's call describe on that, it should give us a few summary statistics. Um, on that data set. So that would be a, a way of looking at the data and finding our mean. Um, could have absolutely done that down there. Uh, it was just doing a different method. This gives us a little bit more information than just purely get returning the average there. Um, 
you know, we get percentiles here and, and standard deviation and things. Absolutely. Yeah. Describe is a very useful method if you want to get um, a lot of summary statistics very quickly. Um, all right. Uh, next question also from uh, Road. So uh, when you were um, trying to find the relegation zone, this is something that confused me at first, is that you said the position is equal to 18 rather than greater than or equal to 18. So can you just explain why you've done that? Yeah. So if I did greater than or equal to 18, that would skew our points and things down a little bit. Because we're setting it equal to 18, um, the thing we're really trying to find is, let's say, I score 42 points in a season, for example. Like, what's my likelihood of, of being safe? If I did 80, like 80, 19, and 20, that would skew the average points per season of relegated teams down rather than giving us kind of like the floor of you need, if you're above this, you're safe. If you're below this, this is kind of relegation zone type things, if that makes sense. Yeah, so I guess for anyone who's not familiar with like soccer, like 18 is the highest position you can be in with it and still be relegated. Yes, right, it's like the it. best loser almost. You know, the best loser. The, I like yeah. <laughs> okay, actually, um, before we move on, I have one more question for you as well. So if you go back to the Champions League positions um, output, it looks like the 2004 2005 year is really weird. So yeah. you've got someone qualified for the champions league but they had a negative goal difference i don't know whether you have any like recollection of what happened in 2004 2005 i think chelsea uh, won it that year well chelsea won it the uh chelsea's actually this uh 2011 2012 year so they're the sixth place finisher um that qualified i actually think it was um two different teams i think the net yeah the negative goal difference was everton and they actually finished fourth just pulled it up on my second monitor um and the fifth place team was liverpool who they actually had a plus 11 goal difference um look how they uh, so they won it the previous year as well but but i uh when i was found this date initially i remember looking this up and thinking oh that must be one team who won it but they had a bad season but actually it's one team finished fourth with a negative goal difference and then separately liverpool won the champions league the previous year which qualified them in so it's actually two different teams, which, again, that's kind of a good display of why you can't always just look at summary data and make a conclusion. My initial conclusion was one team finished fifth with a negative goal difference and qualified. But in reality, that's not the case. It was two, you know, two separate things driving that. So, I mean, this is one of the joys of exploratory data analysis. You see some results that look weird, and then that stimulates further questions that you can go and look into. Yeah, exactly. All right, super. Uh, I think with that, uh, we've got no more questions from the audience, so uh, we can move on. Okay, absolutely. Let's keep going then. Um, so this correlation question we're talking about. Um, so here we can see there's a weak negative correlation. So so negative zero point three. That you know there's some correlation there, but it's not you know massively strong. Um, and that is basically saying that when top teams do really well, the relegated teams usually do a bit poorer which, you know, if we just think intuitively kind of makes sense because if teams at the top are winning more, that means they've got to be beating more people, which means the teams that they're beating are scoring less points because um, they're not winning. Um, average is a 54-point gap from top to bottom. Um, and, you know, just looking at the graph, it looks like it, it, you know, there's only a couple seasons where it's much greater than that, but it generally hovers around there. Um, this talks about also the, the no team winning it with, fewer than 80 points. I mentioned that already. Um, and it looks like points needed to win the league maybe very, very slightly increasing. Um, you can kind of see that there could be, it would be good to put a trend line on this and see. Whereas the relegation kind of floor looks like it's been pretty, you know, set around 30 to 40 points for as long as, you know, we have data for on this. Okay, moving on. Um, as I mentioned, that there's not really enough data to, to make really great conclusions on this too. Just wanted to... to point that out so moving on um we're going to create a bar chart now showing the number of years each team has been in the premier league so obviously um for people that aren't familiar with with uh, the way that the english premier league works the bottom three teams get relegated meaning they don't play in the league next year they play in a lower league so for some teams they may have only played in the premier league one or two seasons in this 20 year span whereas other teams maybe have been playing for longer um so to do this um we're going to create this variable team count and we're going to assign that to the EPL condensed data and we're going to select the 
team column. Sorry. And we're just going to do a value count on that. So that will look through our condensed data and just count how many times a team can only appear once per season. So if we count how many times a team appears in the team's column, that's going to be how many seasons they're in the Premier League. We're also going to um, now filter the rows of the condensed column to only contain Europa or Champions League years. Um, because further down, we're going to do another bar plot um, on the kind of the, the European years. So to do that, we're going to create this variable called Euro IDs. Ooh. We're going to take the EPL condensed data. And we're going to select the result column. And we're going to filter that to only have rows where the results column contains Europa or oh, Champions League. Then following that, so now we'll have um, kind of a list of all the indexes where Europa and Champions League occur. And we're going to use that to filter the EPL condensed data on those indexes and then um, kind of return the teams column based off of those indexes and then do a value count on that. So as I'm writing out, we'll, we maybe we'll explain that again, just uh, might be clear as I'm writing it though. So we're going to do EPL Euro year counts. We're going to take that condensed data, as I mentioned, and we're going to filter that on those Euro IDs. So that's all the indexes where teams played in Europe. And then we're going to do a value count on that. So now if we, let's just print this. Um, let's print Euro IDs so we can take a look at that. And then we will also print the Euro year counts so we can take a look at that as well quickly. So I run that. So this Euro IDs, as we can see, it's just returning an, an index with a true or false. We're then using that to filter our EPL condensed data. So we want the teams column and we want it where the indexes are true. And then we're going to take a value count of that. And so that's just going to give us a numerical number for how many teams, how many times, sorry, each team appears um, kind of with a Europa or a Champions League uh, result. Hope that makes sense. So next thing we're going to do, um, sorry, lost my place there is we're going to draw bar plots for both team counts and Euro year counts. And we're going to use those to kind of look at how much time each team has spent in the Premier League and how many times then they've qualified for Europe. So for the first one we're going to do is the team's plot. I'm um, going to do a PLT. We're going to set the figure size again, um, just to be something nice and readable so it's not auto-sized. Um, we're going to use Seaborn. And this time we're going to do a bar plot instead of a series. And the data is going to be team counts for this first one. And again, we're going to set that color. I'm just going to copy and paste it so I get the right one. And some astute uh, individuals may have noticed that these are the official Premier League colors as well. Just a little, I'm not sure if anyone would have noticed that. Um, we're going to label the y-axis years in EPL. And we're going to set some the X ticks to be 90 degrees rotated again, so we can read it. And then we're going to show the plot. So if I run this quickly, I have made another typo, making a lot of those. So here we go. We can see now um, there's been there's 21 years in our data set. So we can see that Manchester United, Everton, Liverpool, Arsenal, and Chelsea and Tottenham, sorry, so six teams. These six have been in the Premier League for every single year in our data set. Um, I'm actually going to do one zoom out quickly just so, so we can fit that on. Um, Manchester City uh, are actually one shot. Sorry, there's 22 years, not 21. Manchester City have only been in for 21 years. And then we have teams down here like Blackburn, Bradford City, Coventry City, Brentford that, that are you know one or two years down here. Okay, zoom back in. Um, now we're going to do the exact same thing but this time for the years in Europe. So we're probably going to see fewer teams. Um, this is every team that's in our data set. So I think it's 36 teams or something like that. Um, 
this next one, obviously not all of these teams have played in Europe, so, so we'll expect to see fewer teams on it. So like we did in the last one, we're going to do set the figure size again. Just set that to be the same. We're going to use Seaborn again to do another bar plot. Data we're going to use this time is going to be the Euro year counts. Color, I'll copy that across. Uh, and we're going to label uh, years in Europe. We are going to set a y-axis label of years in European competitions. We're going to do all the same things of rotating the labels on the x-axis so we can read them. Um, one thing that we are going to do a little bit different on this one that we should have probably done on the previous one, just to make it a little bit nicer, um, we're going to set the Y tick. So at the minute, these are automatically set um, to go from 0 to 20 in steps of 5. Um, we know we have 22 teams, so we want to go from 0 to 22. And let's just do it in steps of 1. There's only going to be, um, sorry, I need to set that to be a range. There's only going to be 22 ticks. So you know it's not going to be too crowded if we do that. And it just might make it a little bit easier to see, you know, how many these these lower number teams have actually, um, you know, how many years they've actually been there. So let's show this plot. Okay. So we can see now, uh, we're actually cut off. Let me exchange this, extend this range by one. There we go. So now we have these nice ticks for every year, which makes it a little bit more readable. Um, so we can see all these teams down here that have only one year in Europe. And then we're getting back over to those kind of same six culprits plus Manchester City. Um, when we get to the left end of this, which is showing teams that have been in Europe for more years. Um, we can see from this that there's only you know the 22 years um, that Manchester United and, and those top six have been in, in the Premier League. Um, Manchester United, Chelsea and Arsenal had, I'll say had, I'm a Chelsea supporter, the case is different now, but up until 2022, had only missed uh, one year in Europe out, out over those seasons. Um, so moving on to the next thing, we're going to examine now, um, kind of moving on from just tabulating things and, and kind of taking a look at data. We're going to now kind of plot a couple of different data points from for each team against each other and like maybe try and draw a conclusion on how they may be linked. Um, so next thing we're going to do is we're going to look at goal difference and points for one team. Um, as I just mentioned, I'm a Chelsea supporter, so we're going to be looking at Chelsea in this one. Um, glad it's historical data, not this season or last season, because um, that would not be very fun. Um, first thing we're going to do is create this variable Chelsea, and we're going to use the condensed data set again to just select um, the team column where the team is equal to Chelsea, and that'll just give us Chelsea statistics for each season. EPL condensed dot team for the team column and set that equal to Chelsea. So now this will just be kind of a list of all of um, Chelsea. You know, we'll have season and then statistics for each season. Um, I'm going to set the figure size again. I'm going to copy and paste that across just for speed on this one. Um, and we're going to plot our first line. So we're going to set this AX and we're going to use Seaborn and we're going to use a line plot here. Uh, the X axis, we're going to use season again. Um, so it's kind of like another time series type thing uh, where we're going to have year by year across the bottom. But this time on the Y axis, we're going to have goal difference per season. The data we're using, as mentioned, is Chelsea. Um, and then we're going to label this because we have, again, two series on one chart. We want to make sure we label our, our two different series so we know which one is which when it actually comes to interpreting the data. Um, we're going to label this goal difference. I'm going to set a marker for it again just because it looks nice. I'll make them round. Um, one thing to note when, when plotting two things, so we, we're going to have goal difference and points on this chart. Now, the values for goal difference and points are going to be very different. Um, goal difference is going to be, as we saw up here, um, where is it? Our goal difference is going to be somewhere between 
20 and 40 maybe. Um, whereas points are more likely to be up in the 60s to 70s. So to do that, we're actually going to add a second y-axis onto our chart that's going to be independent of the original one. So each series will, will share the same x-axis, but they'll have different y-axis. So this will be good for comparing the shape of the graph, which is something that's often good to do if you're trying to you know, examine correlation. You want to know, well, maybe the the you know the y the actual y number is different but if we just want to look at the shape it, it's easy to plot them on the same thing and, and take a look at how they're affecting each other that way so we're going to set the second set of axes and we're going to use twin x here to kind of make our, our twin x axes and then we're going to use c1 again line plot um this time well we're still going to use season on the x-axis but this time we're going to use points on the y-axis using the same data. Um, and then we're going to label this points. We're going to set the axes this time. We have to do this because we want it on a separate one. Um, we're going to set the axis to x2. Uh, and we're going to use these markers. And we're going to change the color of this one because otherwise they will look the same and it'll be impossible to tell them apart. I'm just going to set it to green. Um, now we're going to set the legend on this plot. Um, so we're going to use lines, labels, x2. Use this method. And then we're going to do the same thing for ax2 here, which is going to be lines2, labels2, equals ax2 dot get legend handles labels. There we go. Okay, so this is all just stuff that's going to kind of make the plot look nicer. Um, kind of, you could do it without, um, you know, changing your, your colors and your marks and things, but it's just going to make it more readable when we're doing um, things like this. So now we're going to actually create the legend. Um, I'm going to set the legend. It's going to be lines plus lines two. I'm just going to copy this across for ease uh, and we want it to be in the upper left so we're using because we're combining two sets of axes here if i was to just show the legend for each there would be two separate ones we want it on one um so we're using this get legend handles labels method to you know extract some of the info from there and then we're combining them down here um so now we're going to remove the automatic in fact i won't do this step yet um, and then i'll show you why we do it later on um, so we're going to rotate the x-axis labels again. Um, we need to do that so we can read them as we've been doing previously. We have to do it a little bit different um, because we, again, have two sets of axes kind of cloned on top of each other. We need to make sure we're doing one of them and then hiding the other. Otherwise, we'll kind of have messy um, double axes laid, kind of overlaid on each other. Uh, we're going to add a title. Just going to do Chelsea goal difference and points per season. And then we're going to show the plot. I'll run this. OK, so this is how our two different lines look. As you can see, we have our independent y-axis, goal difference on the left here, um, seasons across the diff off, across the bottom, and then we have points on the right. Now, we have two legends, um, which is not the nicest thing in the world. So this, the step that I skipped earlier that I wanted to mention going back to, um, we are just going to use the dot get legend and dot remove methods here to remove AX2. So this is axis two's legend. I'm just going to get the legend and remove it for axis two. So if I rerun this, that should be gone now. Now that stuff's a little bit extra. You know, there's obviously a little bit more work here in getting this this legend displayed. You could not do that and simply have the two axes. It's a little bit more straightforward. But just wanted to kind of show you can visualize stuff nicely. Um, you want a nice, you know, one legend with two different series on it. You can do that. Um, so what are some conclusions we could draw from this? Uh, I'll give you 15 seconds to think about it, and, and then we can talk about it a little bit. Just looking at the chat, if anyone's got anything. So first thing that jumps out to me is 
these lines look very similar to me. Um, you know, they follow roughly the same shape. Obviously, there's some gaps at times. Maybe, the, you know, uh, the points jumped more than the goal difference did here, for example. Likewise, the goal difference jumped more than the points here. But roughly, I would say they're following a very similar shape. Um, we can see from the bar chart above, if you remember, there was only one season uh, that Chelsea didn't qualify for European competition. And I think if you had to guess... Um, you know, from this chart, which season that might be, I think it would. It's pretty clear that it's probably this one, the lowest points, lowest goal difference. Um, so you know, you, you can. There's a there's a nice way it kind of ties in with the uh, you know with the previous graph. But overall, kind of our main objective in comparing points and goal difference, I think it's it's a pretty clear indicator that, that there could be some link. Um, one team by itself, though, isn't necessarily the best indicator. Um, so I think. For homework, there is an additional section here um, where if you would like to, um, there are instructions on how to plot the average goal difference and average points for every team in our data set over the season range, um, and then calculate the correlation between them. And uh, I think there isn't, no, there isn't a best fit line, but but it's the correlation and basically um, you know, the average of this data for every single team in our set. And you can kind of take a look at on a much, you know, much larger amount of data rather than just kind of 20 points like this one is, um, examine if there is a correlation between those two things. Um, I think with that, we're just about towards the end. So if there's questions, um, we'd be happy to answer any questions. All right, brilliant. Uh, thank you for that, George. Uh, that was really cool. Uh, we do have a few questions from the audience for anyone else. There's actually plenty of time for questions today. So if you do have some questions for George, please do write them in the chat now and we'll get to them shortly. Uh, before we go on to questions, I was going to say we've got two more um, webinars this week. So we've got a session tomorrow on uh, using Snowflake for snail uh, for snails analysis for sales analysis um and then on friday we've got a session on fine-tuning gpt so if you're into generative ai then uh please do sign up for that also uh we started to plan out the 2024 20, calendar so all uh, i think most of the sessions for january are live on the website so go to datacamp.com webinars see what you want to do next year i know it's difficult to think past the holidays but you know better to register for these things now before your boss starts giving you work to do in um in January. All right. So with that, we will go to questions. Um, all right. And so do, 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 um, there is a question from Rawad saying, would it work for Y ticks to put the values to be equal to unique from the appearances column? That's an interesting question. So I think you were setting Y ticks in one of the bar plots. Yes. Um, I'm not familiar with that method. Um, Richie, I'm, I'm sure you, you might maybe add. Able yeah, to so I, I think the point here is if you set the Y ticks to be the unique um, heights of the bars, it's going to show you exactly how high each bar is. I see. It's a little bit weird because um, you're not going to get a sense of like what the, the gap is. Like, usually, yeah. it, it's much more common to have regularly spaced bars. I mean, you could set to the unique values. There might be some use cases, but the standard thing is to have regularly spaced um, ticks on you. I see. And, and yeah, that, that might be a little bit misleading because, for example, you know, we've got quite a big drop off here. And so if they were unique, you wouldn't be able to kind of um, visualize as well that kind of the top six, there's quite a big gap down to kind of the remaining, however many that is, 20. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then... Uh, oh, just a comment from uh, uh, Uchebua saying, uh, getting familiar with Python before SQL makes it easier for me to learn SQL day by day. Yeah, actually, so SQL is kind of the simplest pr programming language, really, because I mean, there's a, a limited amount you can do. You just do you're just crunching numbers. But I find uh, the syntax um, isn't quite as easy to learn as Python, or even like maybe R has... I. I mean, I come from our backgrounds, so I'm very biased. That R has like the sort of easiest syntax to learn if you just want to crunch some numbers. And then sort of Python is a bit is a bit more difficult than SQL is a bit more difficult because it's a sort of older language and they've not like spent a long time just optimizing the syntax to make it easy to learn. I always found that the the, uh, 
the errors that I got in SQL were, were a lot more nebulous than, than other coding. You know, JavaScript is my main language and they're quite specific. When you get an error, it's quite easy. You know, we've got bug to figure out. Whereas with SQL, it was like, you've got an error somewhere between line 50 and, and, and 23. And then you kind yeah. of... So I don't want to put anyone off <laughs> learning no, SQL no, it's uh, because it's incredibly useful and basically it's ubiquitous at this point. So you do need to learn a little bit of SQL, uh, particularly if you want to be a data analyst. Um, I think data scientists tend to use more Python um, than SQL, but um, if you're a data analyst, like SQL, just the standard, you need to know it. So everything, yeah. doing the same like data camp courses on data manipulation, like learning, this is how I calculate some summary statistics. This is how I do joins. Doing it in a few different languages is actually very informative because you sort of see how things fit together. Um, and joins are tricky enough that you need to learn it a few times before it sticks in your brain. Um, all right, so uh, we've got um, a couple of minutes left. If you've got any final questions, please let me know. Um, otherwise, um, oh, there's a question here on R or Python. So, I, th I think we, we've walked into this. <laughs> this is like starting a, a language war again. Um, both. The answer is both. Um, the, uh, actually, George, do you want to go? Do you have any? Um... I have zero background in R, so, so I can't really speak to, to R too much. Um... All right. Yeah. So, I mean, the correct answer is if you're in a workplace, you use what your colleagues are using because you want to be able to collaborate with them on projects you want to be able to reuse code from like one team to the next better if everyone's using the same programming language if you're writing code for yourself i have the opinion that r is slightly easier for uh data analytics tasks so the kind of stuff we're doing today crunching numbers drawing plots python is slightly easier for machine learning it swings and roundabouts really um it's sort of like do you want a lamborghini or a ferrari you're going to be happy with either, really. It's just like, you know, minor preferences either way. Um, all right. So uh, no more questions, I don't think. So uh, at this point, I think we can wrap up. I hope to see you again uh, on our Wednesday or Friday session this week. Otherwise, uh, have a great holiday, and I will see you all in the new year. Don't forget, go to datacamp.com slash webinars. Sign up for those January sessions quick. Uh, thank you once again to George. Thank you, guys. And thank you to Reese for moderating. Thank you to everyone who asked a question. Thank you to everyone who showed up today. 